Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contributions on this channel. Please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and also click the notification bell so that you will be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this channel, I bring information to your doorstep. I bring news from all channels, from every angle. Things that have to do about the world, things that have to do about Africa, more especially Nigeria. I bring it to your doorstep. Some informations that you ignore, some information that you cannot be able to come across. I look for them, I bring it to your doorstep for you to see. Every video you see on this channel is for educational purpose, to keep you up and get you aware of what is happening in the contraption called Nigeria, more especially. I bring the information to your doorstep. They are not lies. Most of the videos you're going to watch here are videos that are coming from the conventional media. And some of us sometimes are lazy to get into it. Some of us are, sometimes are too busy to be able to lay our hand on this. That is why I bring the videos to your doorstep. Watch from beginning to the end. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes so that you can be educated and know what is going on. Let us watch together. At the end, you can go to the comment section and put down your comments. Give your opinion. Say it the way you feel it. Nobody's going to come against you. It's a free world, and this is the social media where people say it and set the record straight exactly the way it is without being controlled. Do that on the comment section. Let us watch the video together as it comes. Thank you. Elders have gathered in Ankpa this year again to pray for Nigeria in distress, especially for a successful outcome of the 2023 general elections from different Christian blocks. On ground to deliver the keynote address is the president of the Middle Belt Forum, Pogu Beatrice, who was quick to say that the current APC-led federal government is not in favor of the Middle Belt and Christians in particular. The Middle Belt Forum dared to say this government is not working for us. It started with the appointment of most defense and, defense and security sector chiefs from one section and faith of the country. Today we are faced with a very daring Muslim Muslim ticket. If this ticket succeeds in Nigeria, the only option in Nigeria is to pack up and leave Nigeria with our families. The option left for the Middle Belt in 2023, according to Beatrus, is to settle for a candidate of the Southeast extraction. It is in our strategic interest to support the Southeast in the present electoral cycle. We want all Nigerians in 2023 to vote competent candidates, people who cares about the people. Some Christian politicians at this garden hold the view that more is required of the body of Christ in terms of political engagement. So for the church to actually own ownership of political power, please go back and belong to the party system so that you can involve your members from that level. The church can also tell the electorate to behave in a way that will put the interest of Nigeria at heart, that will make sure that they don't sell their votes. When you sell your vote, you have sold your conscience and whatever happens tomorrow, you have no cause to cry to God because from the initial state, you have already failed on your own part. Christians, especially leaders, have been told to mobilize their members and give them quality civic education with the view to improving the electoral outcomes in 2023. Any Mona or Cheme? I must also say what he said about Atiku Abubakar. You know, it has become a fact in the Nigerian political firmament that after every election, that Atiku Abubakar will go back to Dubai to relax. And it is in his rights to do so. And so what he said is that given the situation as we have it in Nigeria, mm. that if a, a, the elections of 2023, that the APC will win. And as it is usual mm. with the presidential candidate of the PDP, okay. he will take a leave and go to Dubai. But your candidate also goes to France and UK. No, he does not leave... I say, why do Bola Ahmed Tinibu does not live anywhere else in the world? So what does he go for? Medical no, he, treatment? No, see, he, he, where, what he goes for mm -hmm. and what he does in Europe uh -huh. is his personal business. Same way is that Anybody, the No, 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 but, but the, the presidential Obama. candidate of uh -huh. the, AP, the PDP uh -huh. lives in Dubai. He's talking about retiring somebody to Dubai. And the question is, what have they done to add value to this country? Atiku is an international businessman. Atiku went to Dubai to improve himself by acquiring further education. I can tell you, Amechi, that if they are talking about the job they want to create, Atiku has been creating jobs with over 53,000 Nigerians 
in his, in his employ. Today, we can mention the companies owned by Atiku. You know of Adama Farms. You know of uh, Atiku Abuaka Farms. You know of Adama Beverages. You know of Prodeco. You know of Intel. You know of Aptis Schools. All these are companies that are known. They are paying taxes. They are very much registered in the um, uh, uh, stock exchange in this country. And of course, you know of Gotel, which is the media arm of uh, the Atiku Abubakar group of companies. Let them tell you what company their presidential candidate owns. We have gone to the Corporate Affairs Commission. It will shock you, Amiti, that Tinubu, the Asiwaju himself, does not have any company in his name. What does, what does that tell you? Just as it's unknown in many areas, He's also unknown in businesses, and yet he prides himself as one of the richest Nigerian viewers. Let's begin what's trending with reactions, trailing comments made by the governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, in which he said that investments in Anambra State being credited to the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, are worth next to nothing. Soludo made the comment during a live interview where he was invited to discuss the state's budget of 258.9 billion naira. Well, when asked about Obi's investments, Soludo claimed that he was not aware of any investment made by his predecessors. Peter Obi served as a number of state governor three times between 2006 and 2014 and is reported to have left over 26 billion naira in a number of state coffers by the time he left office. Well, let's take some reactions. This is from Ahmed, who wrote, This is the third governor of Anambra State who has affirmed that Peter Obi's administration was a waste of time and total failure. Chris Ngige said Obi hates infrastructure. Obi himself had criticized government investment on infrastructure. The former governor, Obiano, also said the same thing. Well, as Steam wrote, I'm told Solude recently received over 268 million in oil derivation from a 4 billion naira investment Peter Obi had made in Orient Petroleum in 2012, one of many of his investment initiatives on behalf of Anambra State. Did he, Soludo, acknowledge that? No. Well, an old video where Peter Obi explained why he left so much money in Anambra State coffers has resurfaced online. He spoke in an interview with veteran journalist Kadaria Ahmed. Well, let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. Before I leave the Soludo comments and go to other things, just quickly, part of the criticism was that you left too much money in the coffers at a time when he believed that there was actually things you could do no, the, with the, that no, 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 let me tell you, let me tell you. When people say I left too much money, that where I think things are critical for me, rather than go and they spend, spend the limited resources of the state, I try to look for federal government, development partners, assistance in other areas. What we did in terms of the money we left, if you are operating with the depleting assets, you must save for the future. And I'll give you an example. Somebody told me yesterday, said, the foreign currency component of your saving is at about $170 million, which is like about $40 billion. Which state in Nigeria can say they have $40 billion. Well, Dr. Abati, this story has been trending over social media from that interview uh, Professor Charles Chukuma Soluda granted and talked about the fact that he was not aware of you know, any investment of his predecessors and went on to talk about an investment that was you know, circulating on social media. I believe uh, it was in relation to maybe uh, Peter Obi's brewery, and that's the story online at this point where you know, people talked about Peter Obi had invested or had you know, about $20 million in that brewery and he said something about the brewery had you know not made any money or it's worthless at this point uh dr Abati, okay. over to you. again it's political season yes. people will make uh, you know all kinds of claims they will defend themselves it's in the nature of the season mm -hmm. for us to have this kind of development however what i've seen about this is that people are saying that mr peter will be the presidential candidate of the labor party is from anambra state if anything, you will expect the governor of his own state to support him and not to say anything that will appear to demarcate him mm -hmm. at a time when, you know, emotions are rising high 
with regard to the political campaigns. The second thing to note about this particular matter is that uh, Governor Soludo himself told his interviewer, you know, on Chinese TV, that look, I'm here to discuss 2023 budget, not to talk about uh, investments. But that these investments you are talking about, they amount to next to nothing. Now, in terms of the reactions, I note the, de the reaction of uh, Babatunde Badamosi, the Labour Party chieftain in Lagos State. He accused uh, Governor Soludo, one, of demarketing his own kinsman. Two, he pointed out that uh, after Peter Obi as governor, there was another governor, uh, Governor Obiano, that the question that should be raised, even if he says and he can prove that the investments are next to nothing, what did Governor Willi Obiano do with those investments? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that it was under Willi Obiano that those investments were mismanaged? Considering the fact that it is not always in Nigeria that you have continuity, that you have com commitment to legacy projects, uh, legacy projects that have been put in place by the predecessor. But back to the Baramosi also brought an issue which has been out there subtextually. And he said that he thinks that Governor Professor Charles Suludo is uh, attacking or attacked Peter Obi because he himself has a personal ambition that he wants to become a, a president. So in all of these narratives, you'll find a lot you know, that is involved in terms of uh, you know, being your kinsman, in terms of two personal ambitions, in terms of three, is the target right? Because it's been since uh, 2007 or so that Mr. Peter will be uh, left office. So why is he being attacked uh, at this uh, particular time? Now, the question to also raise is that with the downturn in the economic fortunes of Nigeria, the Naira has been misbehaving, the foreign exchange has gone bad, every investment really has issues, okay? So that will be another dimension from which to look at it. But nobody has queried the fact that Mr. P2B, in leaving office, left a very healthy balance sheet in uh, you know Anambra State, and that he invested a lot in education. It was under his watch that Anambra, you know, uh, went tops in uh, school examinations in Nigeria. But uh, Professor Soludo says, in terms of his in of investment, he intends to invest in public infrastructure, in health, in education, because he quickly, you know, uh, pirouetted away uh, from that question to talk about his own investments in infrastructure. But the controversy is understandable, considering that Mr. Peter Obi is one of the leading candidates in the uh, process of the 2023 election at the presidential level. But it's not my duty, you know, to serve as his spokesperson. I'm sure that he has the capacity uh, and he has a team behind him that will respond robustly uh, to Governor Soludo's uh, claims. And we look forward to that uh, robust response. I'm sure some people, uh, you know, Okupe and others are already uh, putting the sentences together uh, sure. to put up a, a good re response. Absolutely. But they have their right of reply. Yes. And it will be interesting to see what they have to say. Absolutely. Well said, Dr. Abati. Refai. I mean, it's politic season, open season. You hear a lot. Right of reply, you hear a lot. But let's stick to the facts. What are the facts? The question is, did Peter Obi leave money when he was leaving, yes or no? He did leave. There's a letter to prove that. Shouldn't we celebrate people that leave money rather than in a country where people leave humongous debts? Because this same Governor Solo that is speaking, when you look at it critically, he complained about the debts. We interviewed him here on Arise where he was complaining about the debts that was left behind by Governor Obiano. The humongous debts that there was virtually next to nothing left. So if somebody leaves behind, shouldn't we commend them? In a country where we are spending all of our revenue to service debt. The question is, did he make investments? Yes or no? What is the worth of those investments today? Did he achieve some milestones? The answers are out there. Dr. Bati, you said one about the education sector. 
did he make those inroads as regards bettering the lot of the people in the states? Did he reduce insecurity? Those are the facts we should look at. Not somebody saying, oh, the investments are worth nothing. But the question is, there was a person before him, there was a Governor Obiano, that this same Governor Soludo told us on this morning show that left a very good debt profile behind. And it was a problem for him when he started, which is a fact out there that we can't deny. So let's joke, suppose facts, facts for facts. Okay. And call a spade a spade in this conversation. Yeah, I know he wanted to talk about his budget. And I also thought it was good that he did talk about his budget. And in all kudos to Governor Soludo, he has started, you know, he cleared very big slums somewhere in uh, Onitra. He's been able to start some road infrastructure work, you know, and all of that. I will be able to see some level of progress that he's made, you know, because I take out time to watch Anambra Broadcasting Service from time to time and all of that. But what are the facts on ground? Did Peter believe investment? Yes, he did. Did he make investment? Yes, he did. Did Governor Obian? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have been educated with this video. I hope you have learned something from the video you just watched. Please go to the comment section and put down your comments. Whatever you think about the video you have watched or anything you have learned that you wanted to share together, go to the comment section and keep yourself busy. It's a free place where people share their opinion. And please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time a video comes out. And also, share the video to your family and friends. Share it to all platform so that people can get aware of what is happening in the world, mainly in the contraption called Nigeria. We have to keep people on their toe, keep people informed on what is going on. That is exactly what we are doing. Every video you are watching in this channel is for the purpose of education and nothing more. Thank you so much for watching and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again. Thank you.